Hi, thank you. Uh, this is, I think, this is my first talk in English, so uh, I'm not used to do that. I, I don't know if I will be uh, the same amount of funny in English, Latin and Spanish, but I will try. Okay, I will try my best. Uh, so I did this talk because I've been developing a commercial game for the last years together with my, with my dev partner, uh, Murray Summerwolf. Uh, and I wanted to tell you a lot of stuff I learned in that uh, year, okay? So my name, uh, my name, the game is called Waxhead, and it's pretty cool, right? Like, not because of me, because I'm just a programmer, you know, but uh, when it looks cool, uh, I always want to share. And I have the trailer in here, so you can have a better idea of how the game works. Okay. There is like a cool music in the background, but I think it's just in... <laughs> I can do the music maybe like pim 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 pim. It's not about my singing, right? That clapping, yeah. <laughs> so the core of the game is uh, it's a puzzle game, cozy punk slice of life, where customer comes to the store uh, and they want a specific uh, record and you have to recommend them the best record for them. Sometimes they know exactly what they want, sometimes it's a little bit of a... Um, um, you have to guess because of how they dress or be because of some hints like, oh, I want that one with the pink cover before the singer shaved his beard kind of stuff. So it's a little bit of a detective. Uh, game in there. So, just to feel a little bit... Oh, sorry. Uh, it's in this one, I think. Yeah. Uh, I w I'd like to introduce a little bit about myself, uh, so you know me better. I have been a game developer for the last seven years. Most of the time I've been developing with uh, Unity Engine, uh, five and a half years more or less, and two of them I was actually working as a developer support engineer in Brighton uh, at Unity. I also had like half a year uh, of experience uh, with Unreal and the last year uh, with Godot. I decided to change uh, like engines and like learn new ones because you know like something happened last year like almost one year ago that made a lot of us that were working in the games industry to think like maybe I should learn a few more engines, you know, like I'm not stuck with a single one, especially if, you know, like there is like a big company behind taking decisions. So I, I decided to, I had like a plan uh, to learn new engines, like just one week with each engine and learn a lot of things, as many as I can. So my, I started my plan and I developed a jam game. I, I joined the Indie Spain jam, uh, that is like one of the largest Spain, Spanish jams uh, that are there. And I developed this game that is called Digidogo Daylight Dungeon. It was completely out of my core comfort zone. Like, I was learning a new engine, so I just stuck with something I never did, like 8-bit games, pixel perfect, whatever, like, yeah, once you are out of your comfort, comfort zone uh, in Japan, in town, you know? So, uh, I developed this game and I had, like, so much fun. Like, I think it was, like, the first time I was, like, enjoying the process of develop a game in years, you know? Because uh, with uh, the other engine, I was, like, so comfortable that I was just not learning, but just, like, doing the stuff uh, that I already knew. And in this one, I realized there were a lot of stuff I liked, a lot of stuff I got to get used to, but it was a really good experience. Like, I think everyone needs to learn new tools and stuff uh, now and then, because it, it allows you to take perspective of what uh, the weak points and the uh, strength of the engine you are already using. So I spent one week doing this game, and I 
actually got an award at the best solo dev game with my first gaming adult. So I was like, what, what's happening here? Like, maybe, maybe some match, you know? <laughs> oh, thank you. And then I got a second award, like at the best jam uh, game the next year. <laughs> I have to say, it's an amazing game. And then I had a plan, you know. Uh, the next week, I was going to do this really, really cool horror game in Unreal, you know, like the look for the normalities kind of game. And have you seen that game? No, because I neither. Like, you know, it never existed. I just got like stuck with Godot, and I was like, what will be like my next game in Godot, you know? And I started like making a small prototypes just to test like what the engine could do. And I fell in love with that. I even like ported one of my Unity plugins into Godot. And it's even better. <laughs> Maybe because I knew how to do the plugin already, you know? But I, I'm really, really proud of how it came. And it's actually being used in some uh, going uh, like commercial games, so I'm really happy. And then one month after this, uh, a person that I didn't know reached out to me, uh, showing me like a really, really basic uh, twine prototype of a game that it was called Wax Heads. And it was a little bit like, hey, like, I just met you, you know, and this is crazy, but why don't we make a game together, and I was like, you know that I've been using Godot only for one month, and it's like, yeah, good enough, like, let's go into that. Um, yeah, you know, like, what can be wrong? Like, uh, you know, like, when you <laughs> start a relationship with someone that you already, like, you have just met, and it's like, everything is magic. Yeah, everything is magic at the very beginning, but uh, with the time, you start to appreciate all the really good stuff that they have, but you also start seeing like, the stuff that you wish you knew from the very beginning. And I wanted to, this talk to be something like that. Uh, uh, travel, like Some of the main points that have been on my mind in the last year because of developing this commercial game, some of them are like, really cool stuff about the engine. Some of them are just like things I don't love about the engine. Please forgive me. Um, all, but all of them, it's uh, based on my experience, on how I use the engine, that it might not be exactly the same of your situation, but maybe it is. And sometimes feeling a little bit of a company can feel, can feel entitling, right? So. Let's start with something I really loved and maybe it's one of my favorite things about Godot and it's like creating tools is easy as fuck, like really, really easy. Like I come from other engines where every time I wanted to create a tool I had to create like three classes just to extend the editor and like um, do a lot of like weird stuff just to um, make changes that will be permanent on the scene, you know? And when I started developing, I didn't know how easy it was. I heard the stories, you know, everyone heard the stories of how uh, the magic tool uh, tag works, you know. But uh, I actually never understood exactly how something was executing, writing like in the same language as Godot, being like in the editor executing, because I, I was not understanding how the engine was working at the very beginning. Once I understood, it's like, magic like uh, my i have a funny story a funny story my my dev partner uh, Murray, he's like uh, telling everyone how easy godot to, is to use like wow it's really easy you just drag and drop a stat and everything is working and yeah because he's mostly using all the tools i develop for him you know but i don't want to spoil the magic you know he's starting like to have the idea that maybe i have something to do because everything is really specific like add your record here you know like maybe that doesn't sound like a built-in thing in godot but i created these uh, resources uh, thanks uh, thanks a special thanks to christoph because he shared the core of this tool uh, with me and i modified it uh, to fit or project, but now all the resources, as it's a game with a lot of content, like nearly like 50, 80 records with all the images, songs, and whatever, 
having this, it's really useful to him, so he can just like add new content and everything gets set up in that in that in that tab. Uh, it's also pretty useful. Uh, I'm I come from the, like strong typed uh, languages that are not really prone to human error because I don't use strings or how code stuff uh, a lot. So the tools allows me to avoid that kind of errors because I can validate the stuff uh, in, in, while I'm developing or for example, creating new tools so I don't have to manually add the resources uh, to the localization uh, system. So all of them I created not at the very beginning, but I wish I knew uh, before. And for example, these these are like a lot of stickers, you know, and all of them have their zones, areas, collisions, all that stuff. I remember thinking like, okay, this is gonna take me fucking hours. And I was testing, so I wanted to see how it would feel depending if I was using like the areas of the parents or collisions or blah, blah, blah. So I created tools to automatize this, like just to feed them, um, create the, the structure, add the audio and everything. And it saved me a lot of time. And the cool thing is that if I want to create like a variation of this game, I already have the tool that allows me to modify the existing games uh, altogether. So yeah, tools are amazing. Uh, not everything is right on that side. Uh, I want to talk about GDScript. Okay, uh, I come from uh, like strong typed languages. And when I first uh, tried Godot, and GDScript, I wanted like the full package. I didn't want like to, see, to use C Sharp. I wanted like to have the whole experience and I was like, oh fuck, this is easy. Like, I, I remember not even having to look up like how to do stuff because it was like talking in English, like how do I create a loop? Maybe this in that. Yeah, amazing working, I like next. And it was like really fast for prototyping and really like straightforward. But in the moment the project is like getting bigger and bigger and bigger, I have to admit that it's become a little bit of a limiting factor in there. Uh, refactor is quite messy, uh, especially because I was relying a lot uh, in the IDE, I guess, uh, with C Sharp, for example. It's really easy to refactor because when you change like a name or something, uh, the IDE, does it automatically, or even like you can look up all the keys and they are in there. So it's quite easy. But I was also used to have like a really complex inheritance structures. Like, you know, like uh, I didn't know I would miss like interfaces and abstract classes and virtual methods that much, you know. And right now uh, I had like a lot of technical depth about doing this kind of patterns. It, instead of going to composition patterns and I had to redo a lot of stuff. So maybe it's, uh, let's say, my fault in the sense of I didn't prevent this to get really messy right now. But I, I, I prefer to play in GDScript, you know, it feels like better, I guess. Um, the weak tip typing languages are really cool, like prototyping is really fast, but when you want to create like really big systems, it comes with a cost, you know? Should I have used C Sharp? Like maybe, but now I'm too lazy, I got used to like put everything into a rise and just like let it be, you know? But please, everything would be a little bit easier if name and spaces exist. If I only have to <laughs> ask for one thing, like please, someone put name and spaces in GDScript. And I, 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 my, the names of my classes seems like I'm programming with Java. You know, it's like this long. Even like the linter is like, what are you doing? And it's like, it's because of nightmare spaces. I don't, I, I can't do anything else, you know? Uh, another thing is like, now my estimates suck. You know, like I, I used to, to have like a really, I, I was proud of how good I was estimating the, the workload, you know, like, oh, we want this. And it's like, yeah three days and a half, exactly three days and a half, I know this shit. But then, when I moved to Godot, everything is faster, <laughs> like everything. It's like, oh, 
let's try, let's send this build. It's not 20 minutes to compile shaders, you know, it's just like, pop. And they're like, even automatizing all the, the builds, you know, it's, it's like, pop. <laughs> Fixing errors, though, even downloading the, the engine when I was like, for example, in events and I had to quick fix anything. Good luck if you wanted to uh, download the engine with the shitty event Wi Fi you have in there. But we go, you can even like have a pen remote. Like, here you are. <laughs> I'm creating tools, as I said. I guess this is like uh, not okay to lose this skill, but I guess like the upside is that I have more free time because everything is done earlier, so yay. <laughs> uh, another thing is like uh, Godot is free open source, you know, uh, but that comes with a cost, and the cost is my, my self-esteem. Because <laughs> when I was working with Unity, I could totally like, uh, like if I, found like a, a, a stuff, something that I was not able to do. I was like trying to guess how it works. And then I went to the forums and there were a lot of people that were complaining about the same thing and maybe working. Like, I feel like company, you know, like we are all really bad in here, you know, like we don't know how to do shit. And if something we couldn't do at the very end, you can always blame Unity, like fucking engine, you know, like uh, I don't know how this can work like this and that's all. But then, I, when I was working at Unity, I, I could see the engine code and let tell you it doesn't work. Like it's big and giant and messy. Like you cannot find solutions in there. You have to talk with teams uh, because the, it's not prepared to be work. Like everyone is working there. It's prepared to have like small teams that don't the shit they're doing. So they don't have like to over explain PRs or discuss what they are doing. But when I came to Godot, like, uh, now I can only blame myself, you know, like, the, the wall was in there from the very beginning, and it was only my fault not to see that I was running against that shit. And if I had, like, to change the engine, I would have to learn C++, and that's not happening ever, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, it comes with a cost. Uh, this is like the most serious one you have seen, like the tone has been a little bit like, let's, uh, I'm Spanish, so I like to be funny, but this one is the most serious one, and I think it's the most important if you want to develop video games and a commercial game. Some publishers don't like Godot. They don't really like, and not a small ones. I really wish this could change in the future, and I think it's, changing, and indeed, I can say this one, this slide was like, I'm not sure if I will share it, but we signed with a publisher last week, so you can start congratulating. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I can't say the name yet, but they are, they are the nice, not the grumpy ones, you know. But we even had like one publisher that said that if we were not changing to Unity, they won't go ahead with the, with the content, and like, asked us for an estimation of changing and migrating the project. And yeah, we, we talked to him to, to fuck off, you know? So, <laughs> another... <laughs> Hope they are not listening, like, yeah, I look right. it's okay. So, let's talk about something, control nodes. Control nodes are controversial. Okay, uh, I love them, and every time, like when I discovered them, it was like, this is magic, this is everything I wish they existed, you know, like uh, focus automatically, like everything was quite straightforward, and they are really handy, but not as when your UI looks like this, you know. Um, I have now like some quite messy blue and green, uh, here, key going in there. I'm not proud of it. And like, this is like showing the underwear. Like, it's really, I, I don't feel really proud of that, you know? But uh, I wish I knew like the limitations of the green node so I could make my custom ones, especially when talking about focus and like uh, controller support and everything. Um, they are magic, but please be aware if you are, if you don't have like a really traditional UI, uh, sometimes it's better to rely on custom uh, nodes or c custom control nodes or creating your own ones using 2D. 
other cool thing I realized, and it's pretty cool, is uh, like Godot is made in Godot, everyone knows that. Uh, so I could get like my jam game, you know, the, the Digido one, and just put that into the game. And it's like really cool, like viewport inside viewport inside viewport, and everything is quite fun in there. So I can reuse a lot of stuff, but I had to rename all to Digidogo, whatever, in the class names, because no name spaces, please. Like, please, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what, to, what else to use, like class names, you know? And this is really useful, and when you understand, like, tools and all, like, everything is in the same environment, but they are just different viewports, it really, like, it's like brain, like exploding brain meme kind of style, you know? And uh, the very last thing is that documentation is really useful. I was, re like, uh, I, I always was using, like, uh, forums instead of documentation because, yeah, I don't want to talk about the other engines documentation, but, you know, like, sometimes it's not that helpful. It can be messy. But in this one, and as it's people like you that is finding, like, issues in the documentation and changing. It feels really alive and it's really, really useful. So, please check it from the very beginning and don't add, don't ask ChatGPT because it, they only say bullshit. So, yeah, the conclusion of this talk is Godot is an amazing tool. Like, I think everyone that is here agrees, you know, otherwise you would be in a different conference, I guess. But uh, I think, I really think that no matter what engine you choose, like the cool thing is that all of us, we are creating games for others to enjoy. And using the tool that uh, really like, gets the best of the kind of game you are doing is the best option for you. Godot is my tool. It really fits with what I want to do and uh, with my philosophy and everything. And it's the one I'm using. Uh, but yeah, uh, everything is amazing. So yeah, thank you very much. And I hope you like this talk. <laughs> I don't know if there are questions or okay. yeah. if, they, if you have any questions, I think it's uh, the moment. Yeah. Hello, thank you very much for that great talk. I am very interested in the reasons of publishers um, for pushing back on Godot. What were the reasons? That's a really good question. Uh, I. I have found like some publishers to be 100% honest. They were really trying to, you know, and it was like the the thing that made them not go with us. But they were really trying to understand. I think it's more the lack of knowledge and being afraid of not being able to port, because they have heard a lot of times like it's impossible to port games to consoles with Godot, you know, and even if it's changing, uh, they have these porting teams. Uh, usually inside the company that are specialized in, uh, in Unity. So most of the time that's the excuse we have been hearing. But we, one thing we did was going prepare. Like I asked a lot of people that were sporting to a lot of engines to give me like closed prices and like uh, informative stuff so I could send over to convince them before the question arise. And I found that really useful. If you're doing that, you might get like one or two doors open. Um, on the other hand, like there, there was one publisher that it was a deal breaker, but also they they were like really concerned that I was the only programmer. Uh, but they were not concerned about my dev partner being the only artist, the puzzle designer and a writer, you know? So let's not go down into the rabbit hole, but I think there were like, more stuff involved that only got out and it was just an excuse. So yeah. Uh, time is up, sadly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>